so we're going down a really steep slope right now and these downhills are where the hiking sandals struggle the most. In one week, I'm leaving for Costa Rica and I got this wild idea. I don't know if it's a terrible idea or an awesome idea, but it's one of those ideas that I just have to do it. Perfect. So I can bring that sketch into my modeling program, Fusion 360. So I'll just bring in that picture. And yeah, I don't wanna trace the outline of the foot exactly. Let's actually make the profile of the shoe. So around the toe, I'm definitely gonna want a bit of a buffer that'll protect me against stubbing my toe on roots and logs and rocks and monkeys. You know, even if this isn't perfect, I still think it's gonna fit my foot really well because it's, it's a custom shoe essentially. Like it has to fit better than anything you buy in a store. I feel like the major risks or unknowns here are like, how strong is it? Is it gonna survive a three hour jungle hike? Like if this thing falls apart while I'm in the middle of the rainforest, uh, we're gonna have an interesting time down in Costa Rica. The flexibility of the material, um, I really hope this isn't too flexible, but I'm pretty sure they use TPU to make the soles of shoes. So honestly, confidence level is high. I'm feeling good. All right, I have, a, I have one of my flip flops here. If I kind of hold this up next to it, that looks very similar to me. It's, it's really this part I am unsure about, but that is gonna be the key to this next step. So right now, we're gonna make a very thin piece, like not even a minimum viable product. I just wanna see if this is the right shape of my foot before we waste like a pound of expensive filament. Is it going to fit on my build plate? You know, as a kid, I wanted big feet, but right about now I'm happy that I'm wearing a size nine. Oh no! Oh boy. Okay, can we like rotate it? Oh yes, let's get it. Shout out to the small foot crew. We can 3D print our own shoes. Okay, let's do it. Let's print this thing. All right, let's see what we got. Ooh. So it looks like we had a bit of a bed adhesion issue right here, which is unfortunate, but onwards and upwards. So this is TPU. It is a flexible rubber-like filament. Ooh, yeah, that is just <laughs> tearing off right there. It's actually used in the production of some shoe soles, so it should be perfect for our hiking sandals. Don't worry, I have some more fun colors for the final version, but I thought I'd just use up my black for the prototype. How does this compare to my flip-flop? It's a pretty similar shape. We got like a little guitar here. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, that looks pretty good. Like it's definitely generous on all sides. My left foot is bigger than my right. That's why I modeled my left foot. Right foot looking good. Here, let's do the left foot again. Yeah, I don't know that. Like all in all, it looks pretty good. I think we can continue with the design. I'm gonna base my design off of Chaco Z hiking sandals. I owned a pair of these in the past. I wore them all across Thailand and all terrain. They are absolutely fantastic and they have a very simple construction. So the main Z strap, that's where it gets its name. It goes over your foot like this into the sole to connect over here. Then the strap goes under to connect to here. This strap weaves through the others. This side of the strap goes over the other way and then they come around the back of your heel. But this strap here actually goes under the sole as well and links back to itself. So as you can see, you kind of have this series of tunnels that makes the strap work. And those tunnels, one, two, three, are gonna be the most challenging part of this project. This is the highest point of the sole. And if you look at pictures of Chaco's on feet, this sort of coincides with your ankle bone. It's pretty vertical. So that is where I want the high point and the strap to be on that side. Yeah, that looks good. There we go. I can literally hold up my prototype to the screen, scale these to the same size. I can even just put it over on top of it and then mark where those points are. How cool is that? So there's one there and on the other side, I'll say there. Okay, I picked up this webbing from a sewing supply store, 25.6 millimeters. And then this is the tunnel that will go underneath or inside of the sole. 
So we can find out the placement for the other two straps in a similar way. So that should be one. And then the other strap on this side goes over the middle of your foot. And it seems to land at the narrowest part of the sole. Yeah, let's go right there. And I can transfer those positions to my model in the same way. So the next thing I wanna figure out is the side profile. And unfortunately, I don't own a pair of Chacos at the moment. So this is the best picture I was able to find online, the most straight on side profile. The nice thing about this angle is it also gives us the thickness of the shoe. I'm not gonna worry about the tread quite yet. Let's extrude this on both sides. And then let's also extrude the bottom. Bring that up. And then we will do an intersect. So this will give us the combination of those two items. Okay, there is the basic shoe shape. And that gives us a little bit more to work off of. Now we can start. Wow, it's really curved. <laughs> it's very extreme. Okay, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a little floored right now. So I exported just that shape we just made into the slicer with 100% infill with TPU, just to see how long it would take to print. Even on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, known for being an incredibly fast printer, this is going to take two days and 15 hours. That's the maximum time because we're gonna start cutting away shapes. But I'm leaving for Costa Rica in a week. So we need to start printing this like tomorrow. And even then, like there's, there's gonna be no room for error. Oh my gosh. I need to order more filament, 900 grams. Ah! <laughs> oh my gosh, this is wild. So I need to figure out the shape of my arches. And to try to do that, I painted the bottom of my foot and then stepped on a piece of paper. And wherever there isn't paint, that's where my arch is. So I'll insert that as a canvas. Ah, oh, nice, it's like such a perfect fit. So I also took a picture of my arch from the side. We will create a sketch here and we wanna create this kind of U profile. See, this is how designs get done, just one step at a time. Now we got a profile and we can extrude that out. Boom, that's starting to look like a Chaco. So let's make a sketch on here and trace our arch. I don't know, something like that. Let's extrude that up. And honestly, I'm just gonna look on the floor and see how high, what is like the maximum height of my arch? So I would say about 15 millimeters. So obviously it's the tallest on the inside. I don't know if that's obvious to you, but I've been staring at my foot for a few hours now. So I'm getting a pretty good sense of it. Podiatrists are watching this right now in horror. <laughs> Boom. Okay. So now we have the kind of the proper curvature in two directions. That is starting to look like a sandal. Okay. So I spent a while playing around with the arch support. I added a bunch of fillets and I think it's in a pretty good spot. I'm gonna leave it there for now and transition to the tread pattern. I've been excited for this. Let's have some fun with this. Let's create a plane at an angle. Let's make it kind of in line with the shoe towards the middle. That's what the tread pattern in these shoes do. They point towards the toe, towards the big toe. Spacing tread times three minus spacing tread times four. Split this, one, uh, two, there, yoink. Split body, beautiful. Okay, plane along path. So let's go into this plane. So let's make this tread width in diameter. And now here is where the beauty's gonna happen. Let us sweep this, the path is here. Boom, check out that tread pattern. These are starting to look legit. I think that'll be grippy enough. I don't know if these surfaces, if these being smooth will make it less grippy, but I don't know, that looks pretty good to me. All right, we are ready for what I think is the final detail, the strap channels. The challenge with this is we need to thread this strap through a 3D printed channel that we can't access. So if we make the channel 26 millimeters wide, like it can, it can fit in there, no problem. Maybe I'll do like 26.5 just to be safe. And then the channel depth, this is kind of the more critical dimension. This strap is only about a millimeter thick. 
but I'm not gonna make the channel a millimeter thick. That would be insane. You know, one thing I need to keep in mind is to actually get this through the channel, I'm probably going to double this up so I can like pull it through with a coat hanger or something. So we need to actually have it thick enough that it will fit through doubled, which is, oh, it's only about two millimeters. There are so many small decisions that you have to make with a design like this, and every one of them feels critical. It's really difficult. Let's go like 2.7, just to be extra safe. We got our channels made. I feel like we might be ready to 3D print. The only thing, I mean, there's a few things I'm unsure of. One of them is if the tread is going to be grippy enough. Are these areas too wide? You know, I think it's gonna work. All right, I'm gonna bring it into my slicer. How long is it gonna take to print? We still haven't added support material either. So that's gonna add some time. But we did take out a little material. As long as it's not more than three days. <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying that. Like a three day print, that is wild. Please don't be more than three days. Okay, two days, 10 hours. You know what? That is doable. There we go. Just sent to the X1 Carbon. Two days, 10 hours, 51 minutes remaining. Let's see if this works. All right, 40 minutes later, a successful first layer. Woohoo! Looks like we are going to avoid this ugliness that happened on the prototype. A lot of people recommend printing TPU with the door open because it's a soft filament. If there's too much heat buildup, that can lead to clogs and deformation. We are about six hours and 20 layers into the print, and it is looking good. Nice uniform layers. All right, it is the next morning. The print has been going all night and it is looking good. We are well into the solid area now. Many layers of 100% infill. So we are about 26 hours into the print and still looking good. You can see the side profile starting to take shape. We are into one of the channels. <sighs> oh boy. So I just experienced my first clog on the X1 Carbon, which is kind of common with TPU. You can see those sort of fuzzy areas near the front. That's where the filament stopped extruding and slowly petered out to no extrusion at all. Luckily, I caught it while it was still on this layer and I did a, a couple cold pulls and I was able to unclog the extruder. But I'm worried what would have happened if that happened in the middle of the night and we got a huge clog in there and we missed like three, four layers. So I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen tonight. The clog might have happened because it was too hot in there, even with this door open. So I took the top glass plate off and hopefully that will prevent this from happening again. Now we're on to the next layer and you can see why it was lucky that only a small part was affected by the clog. The filament was able to bridge right over that area, but imagine if that happened on an entire layer. It just wouldn't adhere to the sandal and the whole print would be ruined. So I'm really hoping that taking off the top solves this issue. It is 7 a.m., that's why I'm being quiet. We are at the 69% mark and things are still looking good. So one weird thing that's happening is this area here is kind of curling up. I'm hoping it'll get kind of flattened out over time. You can see a similar thing happened over here. And now those ones are pretty good. But yeah, it's pretty bad by that back heel channel. We're at 92%, four hours left. But unfortunately, I need to go to bed. So the next time I see this, it should be a finished sandal or a catastrophic failure. It's finished. Oh my gosh. Oh boy, that is heavy. 
Oh my god, well, it did use about 800 grams of filament. I'm not sure how heavy a shoe is, but this feels a little heavier. <laughs> There it is, the first shoe. And to print the right shoe, we can just take this one in the slicer, mirror it along the X axis, boom, right shoe. Let's print this thing. So we're about an hour into the print and it looks like we had another clog. You can see all the problems right there and there's definite space in between the nozzle and the print with nothing coming out. So I'm glad this happened early on. We can just stop the print I'm really hoping we didn't just ruin the hot end. You know, I saw this earlier. The reason I didn't catch this is because we were on a hike and I checked on the app and I saw that there seemed to be some problem over here, but I should have just stopped the print. I thought I could just wait like half an hour and come back. Always listen to your gut. There we go. Lovely. All right, so get the plate cleaned off and restart the print. Luckily, we still have like four days until we leave for Costa Rica. Hopefully we have enough lag time as long as we don't get another clog. Let's do it. So it is Monday at 6 a.m. and I just woke up to a clog. The print was at like 30%. When I checked it, the nozzle was like two millimeters above the surface, which means it had probably been going for at least an hour, maybe two. We can't salvage it. We have to restart the print. Um, so today's Monday. We leave for Costa Rica Thursday evening. So we have, we have about three and a half days. So all I can do is restart the print and just hope we don't have any more clogs this far along. get this off in one piece. Oh yeah, pliers are key. That's it, we're gonna get it. Yes! Woo! All right, moment of truth. Let's see what this feels like. This is the first time I've put my foot into this. I'm really nervous. <sighs> Ooh, that is nice. The insole is noticeable, but it's not uncomfortable. Like it's very supportive. Oh my gosh, that is a big relief. I mean, it's gonna be a different story when we actually go hiking, but at least for now, we're in a good spot. Ah, oh, yes, there we go. Yes, ha ha. Oh, and that color combo looks so awesome. Oh no! Uh oh. <laughs> it didn't just get stuck in there, the wire snapped off. Oh boy, I hope I can get this out without leaving the wire in there. Um, uh oh. We're really close to the end though. Oh, it's so close, I can see it. Okay, yes, come on. Yes, come on. Ah, yes, there we go. All right. Whew, that was a close one. Awesome, so that will cross over. <sighs> so it is currently 10, 15 p.m. The print has been doing great all day. We haven't had any clogs, but I don't trust this thing. I set my alarm for 1 a.m. and 4 a.m. and I'm gonna get up and check this thing because if we get another catastrophic clog like that, I don't know if we'll be able to print the right sandal in time. All right, I'll see you in three hours. <laughs> All right, it is 2.27 a.m. Print is looking good. All right, it is 3.37, no clogs. I'm going back to bed. It is 8 a.m. 
One more night to go. But first, we have to make it through the day. Another day of printing done. It is 9.45 p.m. We got no clogs all day, so I'm feeling good. But if this thing fails again, we won't have time to print another sandal before leaving for Costa Rica. So I think I'm gonna check it again during the night. Fingers crossed, I'm feeling optimistic. All right, 1.52 a.m. And I think we actually caught it during a clog. Look at how much space there is between the nozzle and the surface. No. I'm gonna pause the print for now. Let's at least get the clog out to start. That looks nice and unclogged. And let's just see what happens if we resume the print. Wow, it, it fully looks like it's printing in there. I don't know if that's salvageable. I'm not sure if we can get custom G-code for the X1 Carbon, so we might have to live with this. At least it's printing. Now it's bridging over a pretty significant amount in this part. If we get past this layer, I think we should be good to continue. Man, Bamboo Lab, this is why you should be able to edit your G-code. Because if I could just re-slice this file and have it pick up where it left off, I would not be having this problem. The printer should pause printing when it clogs. I don't know why it doesn't do that. We're approaching the end of the entirely bridged layer. It looks terrible, but I think it might work. Oh my gosh, the second sandal is finally finished. Woo. I'm gonna go eat dinner, get a good night's sleep, and then tomorrow, we're gonna finish these. All right, we leave for Costa Rica tonight. Let's finish these things up. The sandal is coming along really nicely, but as I feared, these layers did not bond together. Now the good thing is that this clog happened above the bottom of the channel. So if you can imagine, this strap is going to be pulling that joint together. Since your foot will be in here and the strap will be tightened, but there's still this flappiness. It's especially bad in the front. It's not terrible in the back. So I think I'm gonna use some contact cement to try and glue that together. All right, that should hold. The sandals are almost done and now it's time to add the buckles. I actually designed these while the sandals were printing and prototyped them on my Prusa. After three or four prototypes, they were looking pretty good, but they weren't really keeping the straps tight. So I went and grabbed my fiance Eden's Chacos. She has a pair right now, but I don't. And I looked on the underside of the buckle and saw that there were these little teeth. That's the key to keeping the strap tight. So I integrated those into my design they seem to work really well now, but the true test will be, do these stay tight while hiking in the Costa Rican rainforest? We are so close, but there is one more finishing touch that I wanna add. I really don't like this seam on the right sandal. Aside from looks, I'm worried that stuff is gonna get in there and jeopardize the joint. So I got an idea. I have my TPU filament that I used to print these, and I'm gonna try to use my heat gun to melt this into the seam. I don't wanna heat the seam directly because I'm worried that that will jeopardize the contact cement. Ooh, wow, that is melting quickly. Oh my gosh, that actually works super well. Ow, it's hot though. <laughs> Not the grippiest shoes. Let's go to Costa Rica. <laughs> the 
yesterday. You gotta try like 30 minutes of speed walking. Because <laughs> I wonder if you'll get shin splints with these thick. Those look like See, a, nor a, a foot torture device. I didn't know how strong it was gonna be, so I printed them at like 100% density, but okay, I realized yeah, now that I probably could have like. Right now. 100% density. <laughs> I was like, I thought it was gonna be like a foaming. <laughs> 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 it's tricep extension. We could do a whole Morley Zeller workout right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try it. 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 Try it.
for about three hours and 20 minutes into the hike. Still feeling pretty good. The arches are getting really sore. I see now that even though I had the freedom to make the sandals exactly match the contour of my arch, it probably wasn't the best decision because I think you want your feet to flex a little bit when they hit the ground. And I basically have like a big rock in my shoe. That's why Birkenstocks look the way they are. Why? why? They look the way they are. Well, look at a Birkenstock. It doesn't have an arch, it's like a canoe. Right, right, right. So here's a good comparison with a pair of Chacos. Mine and theirs. Look at that arch, that is intense. Five hours later, my feet I'm happy to not be wearing these anymore. Nice. The sandals survived the trip no problem, but my feet were so sore after that hike. We actually went to Costa Rica to celebrate my mom's 60th birthday. And if you've watched this channel before, you know that she is my top patron. If you'd like to join her and gain exclusive access to behind the scenes content, head on over to patreon.com slash morallykurt. I think the moral of this story is that these were really a first prototype. And because I only had enough time to design a first iteration, there were a lot of problems. But what I found interesting was that every problem was a gut feeling that I had during the design process. Not enough traction, too stiff, the arches being too aggressive and it literally feeling like I had a rock in my shoe. But shout out to shoe designers, man. There is so much nuance and trial and error. But because the printing took so long and I only started a week before we left, I didn't have time to do that critical process of trial and error. Yeah, that is not, <laughs> that is really stiff. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Love you, mom.